Okay, so for unit conversion, I want to start with this example here. Let's take the speed of light, which is 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. And imagine I want to convert it now to kilometers per microsecond. I want to teach you the bracket system. The bracket system always works. Let me show you what you do. So the first thing you do is you write down the original number that you start with. 3 times 10 to the 8. And make sure you write the units nice and clear, meters per second. Now, all the way at the end here, I'm going to say, well, at the end, what do I want to end up with? I want to end up with kilometers per microsecond. Now, the bracket system is very simple. So I start off with meters over here, and I end up with kilometers. I start off with seconds, and I end up with microseconds. So I want to convert two things. I want to convert meters. I'm going to set up a bracket for meters. And I want to convert seconds. I'm going to set up another bracket for seconds. Uh, now I don't need to go that far, so let's, let's bring this a little closer here. This here equals to a certain number of kilometers per microsecond. All right, and now all you have to do is simply fill out the bracket. So to fill out the bracket, let's look at the meters. I want to eliminate meters. It's in the numerator. I want to eliminate it, so I got to put meters in the denominator, so I'll be able to cross it out. And I want to end up with kilometers in the numerator, so I have to have kilometers in the numerator here. How about the seconds bracket? The seconds bracket, again, the seconds here is in the denominator. So I need to multiply by seconds in order to eliminate it. And at the end, I want to get microseconds over here. To get microseconds, you have to divide by microseconds. So you have microseconds in the denominator and microseconds in the denominator here. And now all you have to do is fill out the bracket. You can fill it out any way you want. The easiest way I know to fill it out is that I know that in one kilometer, there's a thousand meters. And I know that in one second, there are 10 to the 6 microseconds. There's a whole bunch. So at the end, what do you get? You're going to still have your 3. There's nothing that's going to cancel out the 3. You have 10 to the 8. Down here at the bottom, if you multiply both of these, 1,000 is 10 to the 3 multiplied by 10 to the 6, that's 10 to the 9. So I get 10 to the 8 over 10 to the 9. You should get 10 to the minus 1. So at the end of the day, we get 0 0.3 kilometers per microsecond. Now that's equivalent to 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. So try out the bracket system. I've got three other examples here. And let's try to use the bracket system in order to do the unit conversions. All right, so here are the three other examples. The first one is convert 60 miles per hour into meters per second. The second is convert this density, which is in grams per centimeter cube to kilograms per meter cube. And the last one is the hardest one, convert miles per hour. Imagine a snail is moving at two miles per hour, and I want to convert it to this weird unit, but it still has units of length over time, and that's in units of furlongs per fortnight. Now, I gave you some of the conversion factor uh, that you may need for this problem, but Let's practice the bracket system here. So let's do the first one. The first one says uh, 60 miles per hour. And at the end, I want to convert that into meters per second. OK, so the first thing I want to do, I want to set up a bracket because I need to eliminate miles. Get out of there, miles. Meters. What's the other thing? Now I have hours, and i got to convert that to seconds. I know I need to eliminate hours. I can do it in steps. I can go to minutes first. And then once I go to minutes, I need to eliminate minutes. It's in the denominator here. I need to have minutes up here. And then I could introduce seconds. Now I fill out the brackets. So in one mile, you can look this up. There's approximately 1,609 meters. What else? In one hour, that's an easy one. There's 60 minutes. And in one minute, there are 60 seconds. So at the end, look at all the units, how they cross out. Miles will cancel out with miles. Hours will cancel out with hours. Minutes will cancel out with minutes. And all I'm left with are meters and seconds. And that's really what I want here at the end. So all you need to do is carry out this multiplication and then divide by 62 times. If you do that in your calculator and try it out for yourself, you should get 26.8 meters per second. 
So doing this conversion is going to be useful later on when we start doing kinematics or car problems. A lot of times, you know, this is kind of an average speed for a car, 60 miles per hour. So it'll be useful to convert it into meters per second. All right, great. Let's try the next one. All right, here's problem number two. 5.5 grams per centimeters cubed. And at the end, I want to get it in kilogram per meter cubed. So this one's a little bit different, right? It has a unit that's raised to a power. So how do you use the bracket system for that one? Well, again, we're going to set up a bracket. I need to eliminate grams. So I've got to divide by grams, and I want to get kilograms. Kg up here. Next, I need to somehow convert centimeters cubed to meters cubed. So I need to get rid of centimeters. And I really got to do it three times, but the easiest way to do that is simply to do a three up here. Right? That'll cube everything here in this in this bracket, and then I'll end up with the proper units at the end. So to fill up what's in the bracket, it's pretty simple, right? In one meter, I know there's there's a hundred centimeters, or ten to the two. To fill out this bracket in one kg, I know there's ten to the three. There's a thousand grams in one kilogram, and that's it. Now you simply have to carry this out. So, uh, 10 to the 2 raised to the third power, this is going to give me 10 to the 6. And 10 to the 6 divided by 10 to the 3 over here, this gives me 10 to the 3. So I get 5.5 multiplied by 10 to the 3. That's 5.5 divided by 1,000, right? Multiplied by 10 to the 3, and that's it. That's my answer. A lot of times you can simply write this out as 5,500 kilograms per meter cube. So that's the conversion for um, grams per centimeter cube to kilograms per meter cube. Pretty straightforward. All right, now the last one. A snail's moving at two miles per hour. They wanna know how many furlongs per fortnight. And I told you that one furlong is 220 yards. One fortnight is 14 days. And also, you're also gonna need this other conversion to go from yards to meters. Uh, you can use that one, that's about 0 0.91 for, um, for four meters. Okay, so let's set up our brackets for this problem. A Little bit more difficult. So, I wanna get rid of miles, let's start with that one. Miles, um, maybe I'm gonna do an intermediate step here. I'm gonna to go to meters since I know that one. Once I go to meters, I can go to yards. I gave you that conversion. Oh, and once I go to yards, that becomes easy. In yards, I should be able to go to furlongs. I just call it fur. So let's fill out these three brackets here. So in one mile, again from the previous problem, I know there's 1,609 meters. What else? I've given you the yard to meter conversion right here. We can use this. So in one yard, there's 0.91444 meters. And the last one, in one furlong, I've also given you that one right here, one furlong is equivalent to 220 yards. So this will take me all the way to, from miles to furlongs. Now I still need to convert hours to fortnight. So I still need to multiply by some other brackets in order to convert the time units. So I need to eliminate hours, it's in the denominator here, so I need to multiply by something in the numerator. Let's go to days. And then after days, I can then go to, let's just call it fort, just so we don't take up too much space. So I know in one day there are 24 hours. And what else? I know that one fortnight is equal to 14 days. Wow, so I gotta multiply through this entire thing, but it's pretty straightforward. You just gotta be careful on your calculator. At the end of the day, if I did that correctly, I get 5,375 furlongs per fortnight. All right, so that's how you convert miles per hour to something very complicated, furlongs per fortnight.